When I'm actually in front of a snowblower, the very first thing that I wanna know is New snowblower prices are through the roof, and with the average new two-stage snowblower costing over $1,000, you might be asking yourself, can I get a decent used one for less? In this video, I'll be sharing all my top tips, tricks, and tactics that I use to locate, inspect, and finally purchase that much-needed winter weapon. And be sure to stick around to the very end of the video, and I'll be going over the very best times to buy a used snowblower. Let's get into it. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear, I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. And remember, if you're feeling the vibe and you want to be part of the tribe, subscribe. Just so we're clear here, this video is going to predominantly be focusing on two-stage gas snowblowers. I may throw in some tips for battery-powered snowblowers as well. And all of this is going to be based on my past experiences buying and selling these over the years. I like to call this first part, the hunt. Your very first step should be coming up with a budget and sticking to it. You want to figure out exactly how much you're willing to spend and have that cash on hand. Typically, I'm able to find some really good deals on snowblowers between $300 and $500. In my experience, going any less than $300, I typically find that I'm buying somebody else's problem. Usually, snowblowers at a lower price point will require more repairs. By going over $500, you're starting to put yourself in new snowblower price points. Now, you may be asking JB, how old of a snowblower should I be looking for? Typically, if you can find one between 5 and 10 years old, that's pretty good. They're generally broken in at that point. Perhaps you could find one that that's pretty decent under 15 years old, but if you're going over 15 years, you're probably gonna start paying for some parts. And next, no matter what somebody tells you, size matters. Think about the area in which you live, and if you get a lot of snow, you're probably gonna wanna start with a 24 inch or wider snowblower. A 24 inch snowblower can usually handle that occasional heavy snowstorm and can still navigate around tight walkways. If you live in an area that gets a lot of snow and you decide to skimp out and buy a smaller snowblower, Mark my words, you will be telling yourself when you hit that heavy snowbank, man, I wish I spent that extra 100 bucks and got a wider snowblower. This is probably one thing you don't want to cheap out on. Next, you might be saying, JB, where should I look? Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, some neighborhood apps. These are all great places to start. Here's the big ticket, though. Look for the ones with a thorough description. In my experience, snowblower ads with a long description have generally been cared for better. The seller is telling you the steps they've taken to take care of that snowblower, and if you find an ad that comes up with a short description, they're probably just trying to get rid of it, maybe for a bad reason. Along with the description, you want to take a very close look at all of the pictures. You can start to do your detective work and you can learn a lot. Is it a rust bucket? Is the paint all faded? Was it kept outside? Those pictures can share a lot of details. And if they only take one or two pictures of it, ask them for more. Just say, hey, can you send me an extra photo of the engine and maybe the controls? Or maybe some side shots. If they're looking to sell it fast, they'll probably send you the pictures. Now, once you've looked online and you've read the description and looked at all the pictures, be ready to act fast. To wrap up the hunt, I'll tell you this, good ones sell fast. If you wait, you'll be too late. Someone else will get it. Now it's time to check out the snowblower, and I like to call this part the inspection. Always keep in mind here that it is your money, and you can always walk away at any moment if something's not right with the snowblower that you're looking at. When I'm actually in front of a snowblower, the very first thing that I want to know is, does it run? They can say in the ad all day long that it runs great, but does it though? I don't believe anybody, and I want to see it for myself. I personally like to be the one that starts it up. While I'm there inspecting it, I like to try out the manual pull cord and and the electric start. And once I get it started, I like to just sit there for a minute and listen to it. Does it make a lot of popping noises? Does it blow smoke? Does it have an engine knock? If so, run. One time I was checking out a snowblower and I heard the engine knocking, so I just turned around and left. The owner was like, what the hell? Bruh. I just left it running. Basically what I'm saying here is that if it's running smooth, and it sounds like a smooth running engine, you're good. If you hear a weird noise coming from it, your instincts will tell you to run. Now, if you are looking at a battery powered snowblower, you must ask the owner the following questions. What year was the snowblower made? Approximately how many times per season was that machine run? And have you ever replaced the batteries? As rechargeable batteries are used, they tend to hold less and less and less of a charge. Basically meaning the machine starts getting weaker and weaker and weaker from the minute you start using it. Your main goal is to figure out exactly how much life is left in those batteries. Now, 
Now here's a great question to ask the seller. Ask them, what kind of fuel did you put in the snowblower? Was it regular gas or was it ethanol free gas? Chances are good if they put ethanol free gas in there, you're looking at a good snowblower. That usually means they took some extra care of it. While the engine is running, generally what I'll do is I'll pull the auger lever first. You might even wanna ask the owner to hold the auger lever down so that way you could take a look at the auger spinning and that none of the shear pins are broken. It also gives you a chance to listen to the gearbox for any vibrations, rattles, or grinding. If you hear the gearbox grinding, get out of there. That is a big job to replace that and a royal pain in the you know what. If everything's spinning smoothly and you're not hearing any odd sounds, you're good. It's also a good idea to check the bearings or bushings here on each side to make sure that there's no rattling or any play on the ends. While the engine is still running, pull on that drive lever. Start in gear one and go through every single gear down the driveway. As you go down the driveway, the machine should go nice and smooth. If the machine kind of stops and goes and stops and goes like this, there's probably an issue down below with the friction disc. They usually look like this, and what's happening is the rubber here on the end is probably worn off or completely gone. That's what's gonna give you that stop-go motion down your driveway. These aren't hard to replace, but it is an expense, and it will take you some time. Also, as you're going down the driveway, if the snowblower is doing this rocky motion, kinda like a fishing boat on deadliest catch, what you gotta look at is these bushings right here, they could be worn out, or even the metal around it could be worn, and what that's gonna do is make the axle kinda do this roundabout motion throughout it. That can be a big expensive job and a huge no from me. If everything looks good, check your reverse gear. And if you have multiple gears, check them both. Again, just like all the forward gears, you should feel a noticeable speed increase as you go into one and two in reverse. If you don't feel a speed increase, it's probably just a simple cable adjustment down below. After you checked all those boxes, now's a good time to stop the snowblower and check all the little stuff. Take the dipstick out and check the oil. Here's a great question to ask. How often was the oil changed? If the oil was changed once or twice a season, that's pretty good. That means it was well cared for. The oil should be pretty golden and pretty clear. If it's really black, that means it hasn't seen an oil change in a long time. And you probably have then an idea if it was cared for or not. You can also ask if the spark plug was changed at all. Next, it's a good idea to check all your cables and they should be pretty taut. Be sure to check any pulleys like these and all the linkages down below to see if there's anywhere. Also a good idea to check your levers up here on the top and check your linkages here where they connect. Again, these are all little details that could cost you, so you might as well have a look now. The tires! Give them a kick, give them a look. You should see plenty of tread. If they have tire chains, see how worn out those are. If they're really worn, you're probably gonna wanna replace them. What I like to do is take a look and see if there's any cracks in the sidewall. I also like to press on the sidewall a little bit in random spots to see if any air leaks out. Don't be afraid to ask the owner how often they filled the tires up. These are all great questions to ask and you should never be afraid to ask too many questions. Next, you wanna check out the chute crank. I love these old school cranks. In fact, next time you're at Lowe's, Home Depot, or anywhere they sell snowblowers, watch when somebody goes and looks at a snowblower, the very first thing they usually do is turn the crank. It's kind of funny to watch. If you happen to find a snowblower with a chute control lever up here and cables that run down to the chute, those are nice, but I have found over time that they generally break pretty easy. I have personally fixed a couple of those chute controls before, and I know a couple of owners that have transformed their chute design to now include a hand crank. They cut cable. You can't beat these old school cranks. They're time tested and never fail. Make sure your deflector up top pivots and holds its position. Some chutes are plastic, some are metal. Metal ones can rust, but if you take care of them, spray them down with like a silicone spray or an oil protective spray. They generally don't rust that easy. These plastic chutes do a pretty good job. I have personally never seen one of these crack, but I have seen them wear. Down here over time, these little grooves can start to wear out. And up top, I've seen these little bolt holes wear up here. They're made of a pretty flexible plastic. Now here's something I like to do on every snowblower that I check out. I always bring a socket set with me. And what I'll do is I'll take a look underneath the belt cover. This is one step that I find to be worth it. Pop it off. Come on, work with me. There we go. And take a look at all your belts. You wanna take a look for excess wear on the outside as well as any cracks along the inside. Same thing on the drive belt on the back. Also look for excessive play. In that case, you'll just have to simply tighten up the tensioner pulley. If all that looks good, Simply button her back up. Here's another big question to ask. Were those belts changed before? Not a difficult task. I actually have a couple videos on that and I'll have those linked down below in the description. And while you're down there, would you mind taking a super quick second okay, to hit that like button? That'll help this video out with the YouTube algorithm.
Thanks. Lastly, the cosmetics. I'm going to give the entire snowblower a quick look over. Check all around the engine and below it for any leaks. If you see any areas that look like they've been wiped away, chances are you got a leak on your hands. On the auger side, I like to look for any rust, wear, or broken welds. Looking down deep, if those welds are broken and I shake this panel, the whole thing will kind of come out like this. That's a snowblower you want to avoid. That could be a chore to get that fixed. You want to look to see if the scraper bar down below is all worn out or rusted over completely. Sometimes these bottom corners can be all rusted out. Maybe back here you'll see a lot of rust. The problem with rust is that snow tends to stick and you can spray coatings in here to try to slow it down or maybe prevent it from keeping on going. But at the end of the day, if you can find one that's pretty solid and intact, you got a good deal. You can also spray touch up paint on those rusted areas, but at the end of the day, the original finish is going to hold up best. And finally, see if the snowblower comes with any extras. Maybe the seller has the original owner's manual. Maybe they have the electric start cord. This one actually came with the original skids and the owner decided to make his own. This one, look at how worn out these babies are. Oh my goodness. The original owner made these ones. These are actually pretty cool. Wish there was a little bit more of a rounded edge here, but all in all, not bad. You might want to ask them, are these all the parts that came with it? You might get your hands on some extra goodies. Now you found a snowblower, you made it through the inspection, now it's time for what I call the deal. Time to work the deal. If you found any flaws along the way through your critical inspection, use those to knock down the price. Time to work the deal. But be reasonable with your negotiation. You don't want to offend the seller. Time to work the deal. Let's say the snowblower costs $300 and you found a few flaws along the way. Well, what I like to do is keep about $250 in one pocket and the other 50 in the other. And then what I'll do when I go to buy the snowblower or make an offer, what I'll do is I'll reach in my pocket, hold out the $250 in cash in front of them and nine times out of 10, they'll take it. I'll say, hey, would you take 250? And boom, almost every single time, they take it. It's something about money in their face that they just can't say no. There have been times when I found a snowblower that was so nearly perfect that they wouldn't take it. They wanted the full price. Once you and the previous owner come to a deal, pay for it, load it up, and get out of there. Do it before they change their mind. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned the best times to buy a used snowblower. In my experience, there are really two good times to nab one. Number one is in the summer. I have seen some great snowblowers that are fully loaded go for as little as $75 to $100. Typically, I'll see people selling them at yard sales, flea markets, garage sales, or just even random posts on Craigslist. These sellers are generally trying to make some room and need them gone. They're pretty much willing to sell them for a low price. The second best time to buy a snowblower is when somebody's moving away. Maybe they're moving to a southern state where they don't need them anymore. In that case, they need to get rid of things fast, so you can usually swipe them for a deal. But for those kind of deals, you gotta act quick. Don't forget to check out more cool garage gear content right here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the garage.